Five, four, three, two, one. This is an acceleration supplement to the textbook. It revises and goes over some of the same ideas and also extends. The definition to begin with, acceleration is the rate of change of velocity of an object and acceleration is a vector. A body is said to be accelerating whenever its velocity changes and because acceleration is a vector this change can be a change in the size or magnitude of the velocity and or the direction of motion. The diagram gives three different cases. In the first, the car is accelerating or speeding up from 30 km per hour to 60 km per hour. We say that it's accelerating because its velocity is increasing. In the second case, you can see that the car is remaining at 60 km per hour. Its speed is constant, but its velocity is changing because its direction is changing and therefore there is a change in velocity which means that it is accelerating even though its speed stays constant. In the third example the car is slowing down from 60 km per hour and eventually stops. In this case we say that it's decelerating. It's still an acceleration but it's a negative acceleration. So the sign convention, in other words how do we interpret plus and minus signs, an increase in velocity results in acceleration and that is a positive sign. A decrease in velocity results in deceleration which is a negative sign. I've given the formula to you here again. It is worth memorizing these although they will be given to you on a formula sheet in tests u is the initial or starting velocity and v is the final or finishing velocity and remember that and remember that in previous cases where we calculated average velocity we always used the subscript av to represent the average that was specifically so that we wouldn't confuse average velocity with the final velocity which also has the symbol v the SI unit of acceleration is the metre per second per second, or m slash s squared. Now here's an example that just maps out a change in velocity. A car is initially at rest, which means it's not moving to start with, and it accelerates at a rate of 5 metres per second squared. Find its velocity after 6 seconds. What this means is that the car is gaining 5 metres per second in velocity every second and so after six seconds it's just five times six equals thirty meters per second. We could also apply this formula noting that u equals zero and you just get v equals five times six equals thirty meters per second. It's important to realize that at is just the change in velocity so to use that delta notation I introduced the other day, the change in velocity is just at. So even if the car wasn't at rest, you could calculate the change in velocity equals 30 meters per second and then just add that on to whatever the initial velocity happened to be. The average of any two numbers is just the sum of the two numbers divided by two. So we could find the average velocity of an object by adding together its initial and final velocities and then dividing by 2, which is the same as multiplying by half. So Vav equals a half in brackets u plus v. And if we substitute Vav into uh, the other formula we started with, then you get s equals half u plus vt. Remember that the most basic formula from the definition of average velocity was this and so rearranging that just gives Vf times T. So what we've done is we've substituted 
this formula in place of the VF to create this formula. Another calculation. A car initially travelling at 5 metres per second accelerates at 3 metres per second for 10 seconds. Find its final velocity to begin with. Alright, so we'll keep this simple. The final velocity is given by V equals U plus AT. Substitute in the numbers and calculate it and you get 35 metres per second. I do apologise for my scratchy voice and my scratchy writing today. B, find its average velocity during the 10 seconds. So we can use this new formula we just saw. The average velocity is half of the initial plus the final and that gives us 20 metres per second. And then finally the distance. Now keep in mind if an object is moving in a straight line there's no difference between distance and displacement unless it changes direction and moves back and forth along that line. So distance and displacement are one and the same in this question. So S equals VF times T um, is the simplest way to calculate the displacement or distance. Moving on to acceleration due to gravity falling objects accelerate towards the ground and we define down as the direction of the force of gravity towards the centre of the earth and falling objects accelerate towards the ground at the same rate this is strictly true only in a vacuum because air produces friction against any falling object that friction is called air resistance in general, friction always opposes the motion of an object and in fact air resistance will prevent objects from reaching their maximum velocity compared to what they would have in a vacuum. So the acceleration due to gravity is a constant effectively uh, acting on objects. In fact, there are minor differences in the density of the Earth's crust and so forth so the acceleration due to gravity is actually an average of 9.80 meters per second squared. It is slightly different in different places on Earth. The picture shows the motion of a falling basketball that hits the ground and then bounces back up twice. And first of all, you can see that the shape of its path is a parabola. Here we go. The basketball is falling, bounces up, bounces up again. Each time it is losing energy, which is why it doesn't reach the same height. Now, the force of gravity is causing it to accelerate down as it falls. And this is illustrated by the widening gap between two consecutive images of the basketball the same time interval exists between each image of the basketball. So the closer two images of the basketball are together, the shorter the distance it has travelled during that time interval. You can see that it is speeding up on the way down and slowing down on the way up when it is working against the force of gravity. Oh, that's how I feel. Sick as a dog. <laughs>